What is up everyone? This is Ken from Wiltshire Tutorials and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'll be showing guys how to get the best possible quality on your Steam Link device using a few tweaks. When I first plugged in the Steam Link and gave it a whirl for the first few hours, I was a little bit underwhelmed in terms of its stream quality. I found that there was a lot of artifacts in the video of my games. Now, being the quality person that I happen to be, I always want to get the best quality out of the products that I buy. Now, I set out on the internet to see if I could find a way to remove the bandwidth cap that Valve has put on the Steam Link. After a few hours, I managed to find a blog post of someone actually doing that. And I'm here to show you guys that process today. Now, to do this process, you need a few things. Obviously, you're going to need a Steam Link device. You are also going to need a PC that has the ability to transfer over the modified files to a USB thumb drive. Now, with that said, we are going to need a USB thumb drive with at least 256 megabytes in space. It could be an SD card into a USB reader or a thumb drive. It doesn't matter as long as it's a storage device that can go into the Steam Link and be powered from it. Now, we are also going to need a device that has the ability to navigate the Steam Link, such as a Steam controller, Xbox 360 controller, or a mouse and keyboard. With that said, I'm going to jump over to my PC now, and I'm going to show you guys the process with the modified files. Before we start modifying the files for the Steam Link, make sure that you have a storage device plugged into a USB port on your PC. Next, go to the description below this video and click either one of the two links, Mega or File Dropper. This will lead you to the area where you can download the modified files so you can begin the tutorial. With the modified configuration files downloaded, right click on the zip folder and extract all the contents of that zip folder. With the contents extracted, feel free to delete the zip folder and go ahead and open up the extracted file folder. Once you're in the extracted file folder, select and copy the two configuration files in that folder. Next, navigate to your removable storage device and paste those configuration files into your storage device. After pasting those two configuration files, open up the text document named streaming underscore RGS. This text document contains an argument. Now an argument is a line of code that tells the Steam Link what to do in terms of settings. For example, this line of code is telling the Steam Link what its maximum bitrate is for its hardware encoder. By default, the Steam Link has a hardware encoder limit of 25 megabits per second. Now, in this line, I've changed it to 35 megabits per second. By doing this, this will increase the quality coming out of your Steam Link. However, this will also induce a little bit more input latency. If you find that you're having issues with the Steam Link in terms of latency for the input or laggy audio and video, I suggest that you knock down the hardware bitrate limit to 25,000. This is the default limit that the Steam Link comes with, and I suggest that you work your way up from there to find what's best for you. I've personally found that 35,000 works best for me. That may be due to a few reasons, such as my host PC being very good in terms of hardware, as well as my home's network router. Once you have figured out a value that you think will work well with your Steam Link, go to File and save the text document. Now, if you don't save the text document, you'll be using the hardware bitrate limit that I have provided for you, which would be 35 megabits per second, and it may not work well for you. Next, we need to put the modified configuration files in a few folders. So first, you need to create a folder called Steam Link. Now, once you've created that folder, go inside that folder and create another folder called config. Once you have made the config folder, go inside that folder yet again and make another file called system. Now, what we need to do is we need to put the modified configuration files in the system folder. So cut and paste those configuration files into the system file folder. With that said, we are now done transferring the files on our computer, so you can go ahead and remove your USB storage device from your USB port. With your USB storage device in hand, go to your Steam Link and plug in your USB storage device in any free USB port. Also, make sure that your Steam Link is unplugged at this time. With the storage device plugged into the Steam Link, go ahead and plug in your Steam Link and power it on. For this demonstration, I decided to switch up my USB reader, mainly because the Duracell reader that I am now using has an activity light on it. On the thumb drive or the USB reader that you're using, the activity light will flash as soon as you turn on the Steam Link. During boot, the Steam Link will read the configuration files from that USB drive. With our Steam Link turned on, let's jump over to the Steam Link's interface and let's get started. Once you're on the main menu of your Steam Link, go to the Settings tab and then go to your Streaming tab. Now, what you want to do here is you want to change the display resolution to whatever the resolution of your TV is. For some odd reason, whenever you use the configuration files, it wants to default the resolution to 900p. So since I'm using a 1080 monitor, I will be using 1920 by 1080. You also want to choose the performance overlay as well so you can tell 
how well your Steam Link is handling the modification. Once you have connected to your host PC with the Steam Link, make sure you have a keyboard plugged into your Steam Link. Once you're on the main menu, hit the F6 key and this will bring up the detailed information about how your Steam Link is performing in terms of streaming. I'm now going to start up Rocket League and use Rocket League as a benchmark for the Steam Link. Now Rocket League is very intensive for the Steam Link for whatever reason, I'm not sure. However, this is a very good game to test the Steam Link's performance. Now in this example, I am using Wi-Fi on my Steam Link, so I will be setting the maximum to about 28,000 kilobytes per second or 28 megabits per second. So I'm going to try and find a match here just to show you guys the performance of the Steam Link on Wi-Fi. If you paid close attention to the example video of Rocket League running at 28,000 kilobytes per second, you'll notice that there was a little bit of an audio dropout when things got intense. Now this is the issue with Wi-Fi, it will not be as stable as Ethernet, so I'm going to show you guys an example of the modification running at 35,000 kilobytes per second while it's running with Ethernet. As you can see, while using Ethernet with the Steam Link, it's much more stable when pushing the bitrate a lot higher than it should be. With that said, I highly recommend Ethernet over Wi-Fi when using this mod. However, this mod can be quite useful for you if you're using Wi-Fi and you want to dial in the bitrate so you get a good experience over Wi-Fi. Also, what I find interesting is that each game that you play will perform differently. For example, Fallout 4. Fallout 4 barely even reaches the 35 megabit max that I've set, which is rather interesting. With that said, you may have to do a little bit of trial and error. You may have to mess around with the bitrate to get it to work with certain games. But it's not that aggravating because all you have to do is edit a text document and save it on your memory stick. So messing around with things is not overly complicated, which is good. If you're having issues seeing the difference between the factory default for the stream quality and then the modded stream quality, I've linked a picture down below that is lossless. It hasn't been compressed in any way, so you should be able to get a good representation of the difference that this mod makes. Now, it's not big, but it is enough to warrant using the mod in my opinion. So this wraps up the tutorial on how to change the maximum stream quality on your Steam Link. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button below. I'd very much appreciate that. If you guys want to see my Steam Link review that will be coming in a few weeks, I suggest that you hit that subscribe button below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.